Welcome to a program where if you hear the phrase TikTok, you can rest assured we are talking about either a clock or the time of day. It's the modern moron. Little bit of a long episode for you, and in it we spend a great deal of time talking about exclusivity. That's a good thing, right? You hear about something being exclusive. That means not everyone can get it or experiencing it. And not only does it mean you do get to experience it, most people do not get to experience it. Whatever it is, they're excluded. Now that I say that out loud, this podcast seems pretty exclusive because it's basically you, me, and you know maybe one other person we don't know. That's pretty exclusive. We talk about exclusive brands of alcohol, like George Clooney's tequila, who started Casamigos Tequila in 2013, along with two other partners for about 1.8 million, 600 grand apiece. In 2018, they sold it for $1 billion. That's $1 billion with a B, which made him, George Clooney, the highest paid actor in 2018, even though he didn't make a film. So be looking for Senator Single Barrel Rye Whiskey coming to a specialty liquor store? Hmm, I think it's going to be more exclusive than that. You'll probably have to go straight to him. Next up, we talk about the latest investigation into Trump searching for people leaking information to the news media during his administration. Trump went to Apple to get phone records. The senator is upset because he says Obama did the same damn thing while he was in office. Now, you know that the last thing I would ever want to do is agree blindly with the senator, if at all. So I did look up a couple of things. And when I say looked it up, I mean barely. Okay, no, I do not read the entire article from newspapers. That's why most decent journalists should write with the traditional inverted pyramid. God damn it. Okay, the articles I'm citing from are a New York Times op-ed. Yes, it's an opinion article, but it's the New York Times. Also, Wired magazine. You may be thinking, why Wired? And I will tell you if you'll calm down and listen to me for a second. I chose Wired because A, I've heard of it, even though they are a tech magazine that focuses on technology as it affects areas of our life, including politics. B, because it's another left-leaning source. And C, because MediaBiasFactCheck.org rates them high due to proper sourcing. So this is from a 2013 Wired article. The Department of Justice secretly obtained phone records for reporters and editors who work for the Associated Press News Agency, including records for the home phones and cell phones of individual journalists, according to the Associated Press, in what the agency characterized as serious interference with the AP's constitutional rights to gather and report the news. That's not now. That's 2013. That's Obama. Yes, we can. The records covering all of April and May 2012 were seized by the DOJ earlier that year and covered more than 20 separate phone lines. The records listed outgoing calls for both the work and personal phone numbers of individual reporters, as well as the general phone lines for AP bureaus in New York, Washington, and Hartford, Connecticut, and a main number used by AP reporters in the House of Representatives. Okay? That was during the Obama administration. And this is from a December 2016 op-ed in the New York Times. So this is before Trump even got going. It says, If Donald Trump decides as president to throw a whistleblower in jail for trying to talk to a reporter or gets the FBI to spy on a journalist, he will have one man to thank for bequeathing him such expansive power. Barack Obama. Yes, we can. Mr. Trump made his animus toward the news media clear during the presidential campaign, often expressing his disgust with coverage through Twitter or in diatribes at rallies. We've heard it and heard it for four years. You are fake news. So if his campaign is any guide, Mr. Trump seems likely to enthusiastically embrace the aggressive crackdown on journalists and whistleblowers that is an important yet little understood component of Mr. Obama's presidential legacy. Criticism of Mr. Obama's stance on his press freedom, government transparency, and secrecy is hotly disputed by the White House. But many journalism groups say the record is clear. Over the past eight years, remember this was written in 2016, the administration has prosecuted nine cases involving whistleblowers and leakers compared with only three by all previous administrations combined. Thanks, Obama. It has repeatedly used the Espionage Act, a relic of World War I-era related baiting, not to prosecute spies, but to go after government officials who talk to journalists. Under Mr. Obama, the Justice Department and the FBI have spied on reporters by monitoring their phone records, labeled one journalist an unindicted co-conspirator in a criminal case for simply doing reporting, 
and issued subpoenas to other reporters to try to force them to reveal their sources and testify in criminal cases. We count on the press to shed light on the most important issues of the day. Now, I don't think this article would be allowed to go to print in the New York Times if those statements were untrue, especially citing the number of cases. Again, I would take Obama over Trump any day of the week as a president, but it's good to point out hypocrisy when it occurs. And of course, no politician, regardless of party affiliation, wants what they consider classified information to get leaked from someone who is supposedly on their team. So you can kind of put Obama and Trump side by side in that regard. Don't be rude. Can you not? It is crazy. Okay, so then we go to my favorite part of this episode where the senator tells me he's going on a retreat to one of the most exclusive social clubs on the West Coast. The fun part is trying to figure out who decided this club is so exclusive because when I try to search for it, guess which club doesn't show up in any top 10 list of exclusive clubs. He finally has me go to the Wikipedia page for the club, which the club probably created itself, that he's talking about. But you and I know that either of us can make any statement we want on a Wikipedia page, so apparently this club is so exclusive that nobody knows about it. Hell, my house is just as exclusive as this goddamn place. I'm the only member. How's that for exclusive? God damn it! Okay, I've talked too much already, and the episode hasn't even started. It's time to get fancy and really exclusive on The Modern Moron. So I took some Maker's Mark, I took a bottle of Maker's Mark, and I bought some um, some organic dates, and I stuffed the dates in the bottle of Maker's Mark, right? And then I let it, I let it ferment for a month. Mm-hmm. So the dates, of course, they're sweet. They actually... Sweet. Did you leave the dates whole or did you cut them up? I left them whole, including the, okay. the pit inside the date, right? I just okay. I just popped them through the neck of the of the maker's mark, okay. right? And I fermented them for a week, or I'm sorry, for a month. And I made a Manhattan, not a Manhattan, I made an old-fashioned with them. And you don't need to add any sugar because the sugar from the dates, like, fermented in the maker's mark. So it's already sweet. My name is Bonnie. And it's sweet. So freaking good. And I'm an alcoholic. It's just, you can taste specifically the the, the I, flavor of dates. Yeah, there. but I can taste the sweetness. So I didn't, you know, usually a, a cube of sugar, you know. And so what I did is I just poured the Maker's Mark over ice. I put in an orange and I put in a little bitters, and that was it. And it was it's fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe you ought to. Maybe maybe you got something there. Maybe you need to mm. have your own label of bourbon. <laughs> Just like uh, just, who's that guy? What's his name? Has his own tequila. Uh, oh, um, the, the pinhead from the Dallas Mavericks. No, Mark Cuban's no. got his own tequila. Well, and everybody's got. Well, it's like a podcast then. Yeah. Everybody's got one. No, I'm thinking of the who's the handsome guy, older, great, salt and pepper hair, about our age, actor, Hollywood. Sounds like you're describing me. Um, I said salt and pepper hair. You color your hair. <laughs> I do not color my freaking hair. Everybody <laughs> thinks that. Oh my well, God. if everybody thinks it. It's not true. No, not even close. Um, God dang it. Um, Matthew McConaughey? No, Matthew McConaughey's. Yeah, okay. I'm just throwing out. I'm, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to, to get the name. Um, George Clooney. Oh, George Clooney. Clooney. Yeah. He's got his own tequila and he sold it to somebody. I don't know how I know this. He sold the the business to someone and the line of tequila along with his name. So there's this George Clooney tequila. Really? Maybe you should have the senator. The senator tequila. You know, special rye, uh, single barrel rye whiskey. That actually sounds good. Senator whiskey. Senator whiskey. Yeah. Doesn't that sound good? It'll be like an old timey uh, sort of yeah. uh, charcoal drawing of you. To make it make you look like, like you know, smoking a big cigar in the back room. Sure, yeah, making a, big making cigar. a deal, making a big, a big, big something in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I like it. Okay, so what I called you about? Well, what I wanted to talk about a couple things. Do you want to talk about politics at all, or are you just so done with everything right now? It seems like we end up gravitating towards that anyway. You know what? This is what I was thinking that we should. Every episode specialize on something. You could do a little financial tip. Okay. 
and I could do something else. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever my expertise is. What anger is my field of expertise? Anger Nothing. management, yoga. No, like, how about meditate. anger mismanagement? Uh, meditating. I don't, I'm not terrible at that too. Um, fatherhood, how to raise a daughter. Seriously? No. <laughs> Let's put that on the back burner for now. What okay. my field? So I, I, haven't can... listened, I haven't listened to the one with your uh, old uh, partner uh, with the Joe Biden. I haven't listened to that yet. I'm sorry. I, I, you yeah, just I... you just sent it today, so don't right. Don't get no. Back. I think I sent it yesterday. Oh, okay. I sent it yesterday. All right. I yeah. thought you sent it today. Okay, I'll yeah. listen. To okay. It. All right. But you had something you wanted to talk about, and it obviously has to do with politics. If you're fired up about something, that's all that counts. Well, because this whole, this new investigation, God, will they just, the guy's going to go away. Who? Uh, your buddy, Trumpy, Trumpy boy. I had no idea it would be that bad. Oh, they, they've got a new investigation? On yeah, Trump? because apparently he- It's so interesting how whenever Trump comes up, you're in his defense. I'm not Why defending him. I'm not defending him. Seems like it. That's the hint I'm, I'm getting. I'm bringing out the hypocrisy, which you- and most of the public forget about because all you guys, maybe not you, but most people just move on to the next story. And they forget about they forget about the history of this line of things that have happened over the past four or five years and even longer. But I'm just let's just stick for the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. You know, Trump being in there and before mm -hmm. Trump came in, Obama was spying on reporters and journalists. It's a fact. Right. He I, I don't know that. That that's a pretty big accusation. What, yeah, I mean, he was. He, he was. You, okay. can, you can you can find specifically that. any specific uh, well, journalists uh, not, or specific not, newspapers that he targeted. But, but this is one that really kills me. Okay, so they're they're talking about um, your boy Trump, who went to Apple, and <laughs> oh right, right, right. Yes, he asked for and, um, for uh, you know search warrants, whatever. He had warrants, right? He wanted to, information about politicians, didn't he? Yeah, he wanted some dirt on. Who's the little pencil neck geek from California? Adam Schiff. The little pencil neck. And the other little pinhead. I don't know. Some other little pin. Yeah, Shifty Schiff. Okay, so he's trying to get dirt on them, right? But while he's going through his impeachment. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. That's politics mm -hmm. 101, right? Get dirt on your opponent. Right. And then they're making this big deal like it's, so, like it's something that's never happened before. Like, oh my God. If you go back to the Steele dossier that... Hillary Clinton paid for to get dirt on Trump. I really regret doing this. Before he was elected, she actually paid for a dossier that, you know, he was ha having pee parties with Russian hookers and all this stuff, all made up, no truth to it whatsoever. And she paid for it. Just, she was doing the same thing, the exact mm -hmm. same thing that he's doing. But nobody, am I the only one that compares those two? Am I the only one that goes, well, Hillary did it, no, Trump did it, no, Obama did it. Now probably Biden's going to, do, everybody's doing it. So nothing's going to happen, right? They're going to go and spend millions and millions of dollars. They're going to investigate. There'll be all this brouhaha. Oh my God, he did this. And he asked Apple for, you know, phone records. And then it's going to go away. And then we'll be on to the next scandal. And nobody's going to remember anything. It's just so frustrating. It's so. Yeah, it is frustrating. I mean, we had four mean? years of a guy. Because they Trump all doing it. Oh, all doing it. They're all. And nobody did it as well as Trump, though. Nobody could fire up the nation like Are you Trump. giving him a compliment because he did it better than anybody else? <laughs> no, it's not really a compliment, but <laughs> nobody could get people tuned in. And I will give Trump absolute credit for one thing he raised the consciousness of people's political awareness. Oh, God, yes. God, yes. I mean, he had 90 yes. million followers on Twitter. 90 million. On Twitter, got the cameras rolling. Who, who, who? And then I guess you could. I guess the, the other side, the other, the other side of the coin on that is, is it okay for one man, Jack Dorsey, who runs Twitter, basically cut off ninety million people because he doesn't like one man? That's a little scary to me too. That's yeah. And I don't agree with. I, I didn't follow him. I didn't do any of that shit. But can one man have that much power just to cut off one other man? Who has nine well, million? Followers. Wasn't Trump also cut off from Facebook? Yeah, he's cut off. Yeah, uh, the the little um, you know the Harvard boy with no date um, cut him off too. Well, he didn't finish Harvard. Zuckerberg, the Harvard Zuckerberg. the Harvard dropout with no date. Um, hey, you know I'd be careful. 
you bagging on the Harvard dropout. He's made, made a lot more money than you have. He's Mr. made Marcus a lot Center. more money because he couldn't get a date. I can at least get dates. Now, I don't have as much money as he okay. does. But... I bet he can get plenty of dates now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What is your point? Oh, I didn't. Well, I just wanted to talk about those politics. That's it. That's it. I just want to talk about that. But oh, okay. there's another there's another item, but I have to be really careful. And you might have to do some. Leave editing. you out? Yeah, well, because I'm Hold going on. on retreat next week. To, what? Whoa, um, what? I'm going on a board retreat next week. A board retreat. Oh yeah, my for God. a. I thought it was like a fulfilling, like another marriage retreat or something. Oh no, no. This. How is... long is this retreat, and what is it for? Um, it's a two-day retreat next uh, Thursday and Friday, and it's for a. Um, shall we say for a? Um, for your a, for your social club. A private social club, my friend. A private social. Oh, club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good for you. I'm yeah. fancy. And we're going. Where is it? We're what a bunch of f-ing blowhards are going to be there. Oh, You're all going to be puffing it. on your big cigars. Oh Jesus! Blah 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 blah. Exactly. <laughs> there is. Um, I can't give all the details, but we're going to. Why can't you give me all the details? Because it's so exclusive. You don't want the paparazzi coming there taking pictures of you. Yeah. Why you can't tell well, me? That's one of the issues. <laughs> yeah. Get over yourselves. I knew. Yeah, you tell- were, I knew you were going to send that message to all the people attending the retreat. Get the f- over yourself. <laughs> well, uh, I w- I would have you tell them, but you know y- you're not invited, and you could. Oh me. no! What do I do? Hang on a second. I need to get myself together. <laughs> oh Christ! Where is this hoo ha? I'll bleep it out. I'm just curious how we're being hosted. It's be. We're being hosted by a private club in um, a, a, a city in Northern California. Oh, are you are, are you masturbating right now? I mean, I know you are mentally, but are you literally stroking your own? D- no. <laughs> What's the name of the place? I'm not going to allow it to go out. Where? Uh, the club. That doesn't tell me anything. What's it that? Is, is, it, it is, is, is it a is it a train yard? <laughs> well, originally that's a good that's a that's a good point. Originally they were going to call it. It was two clubs that joined. They were originally going to call it the club, but they thought people would confuse it with the railroad, so they they went with the true story okay okay what city is it in san francisco okay so it's very fancy it is one of the those so there's considered uh, yeah please tell me how five, exclusive there's, it is there's considered five like. exclusive clubs in the united states and this is one of the five and this is the most exclusive club on the west coast <laughs> according to who according to all the other clubs <laughs> <laughs> Oh Jesus! Most exclusive clubs in the United yes. States. Yes. Private clubs. Most exclusive seven most exclusive clubs in the in the U.S. Will this be on there? Let's find oh. out. So oh, what? Close. Okay, one, two. Oh, one is Club Thirty Three in Disney. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. Oh, of course you have. I'm surprised you. I'll be surprised if you haven't been to all of them, because you're so exclusive yourself. The Magic Castle in Los Angeles. Have you been there? Uh, Magic Castle. No, but you have. Mm. Why, yes. Yes, I you have. were supposed to take me and you never did. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Look at me. When did I ever say I was going to you? Date showed you showed Remember, remember I got- when I took you and your ex uh, to sushi and we went up on the side of the hill there to that really cool restaurant? Yamashiro. Yeah, we had sushi overlooking the valley, overlooking yeah, was, LA. That was a great place. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, I purchased dinner, by the way, if you remember. Um, Senator, please. Okay. See you. <laughs> and, Did you save the receipt? And I believe we went right by that on the way up to the restaurant. Yes, they're they're right next door yes, to each other, you. or down yes. up the hill. Uh, the only place listed is in in San Francisco is a place called Wingtip. Oh no, that's a lame club. No, 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 no. Well, the one you mentioned is not on this list. Okay. Well, you're. you're so let's look at another one. Here, let's up it to eleven. Maybe you'll be there, Insider Monkey or PrivateClubMarketing.com. Which would, which source? Will would you, you listen buy? to me? Can I just say this? The club. Well, you may be lying. The club is a social club at the top of Knob Hill. It is considered to be the most elite club of the West Coast, and one of the most elite clubs in the United States. According to who? Wait, what on. website? You, their Hang web, on. What website yeah. is it? Their let, website. Let me finish the other clubs. 
with the Knickerbocker Club in New York, the Metropolitan Club in Washington, D.C., and the Somerset Club in Boston. He's a grandstander. He's a showboat. Done. Okay. Can I? Can, what is the uh, website? Went, what is the source? I went to source? Wikipedia. Well, I'm looking at the top 11, the Union Club in New York, Cosmos Club in Washington, D.C., the California Club Los Angeles, Union League of Philadelphia, the University Club of Washington, D.C., the Duquesne Club, Pittsburgh, the Somerset Club in Boston, private. Bohemian Club in San Francisco, Algonquin in Boston, the Knickerbocker in New York, and the Jonathan Club in Los Angeles slash Santa Monica. Yours is not on. Your go private. Put it. Put, just put on there most elite private clubs in the United States. Okay. We'll go now. We'll, we'll try it another way. Best private member clubs in the U S according to blog cheapism. No insider monkey. I think that's what I just did. Jonathan. I just club wanted to Los tell Angeles. you about it. I didn't want you to like question me and like. I, well, it's just, you're so full of uh, usually. the Bohemian club, mm -hmm. the Somerset club in yes. Boston, the Duquesne in Pittsburgh, the University Club of Washington, D.C., the Union League of Philadelphia, three, the California Club in Los Angeles, number two, Cosmos Club in Washington, D.C., and number one, the Union Club in New York. Again, your club's not listed. Damn it. <laughs> well, I put, put in. I'm enjoying this so much. Right you know, put in, put in most, most, um, would it be considered a country club? Put put in the most exclusive uh, club in on the West Coast. Try that. I'm so uh, sick of this. Private clubs on the most West elite, Coast. most elite okay. private clubs on the West Coast. The uh, West Coast elite exclusive doesn't work, huh? Elite. Okay, top private golf clubs. No. no. Ah, uh, okay, on y Wikipedia. I, I have to go down one, two, three, four, five to get to the Wikipedia. But I don't see it boom, listed. Boom, I mean, boom, they can boom, do it. Boom, Any boom, I can boom, do a Wikipedia boom, page boom, of myself. Boom, 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 boom. It's so full of shit. Oh, God, I okay. love it. Forbes magazine. Oh, okay. Okay, you, go ahead. You just tell me how fancy okay. your little Richard Let me just give you some of the uh, current and former members, okay? Unplug his mic, please. I don't. How okay. about um, former member, since he's dead, William Randolph Hearst, okay? How about Henry Kaiser? You know who Henry Kaiser is, right? The skill. Yeah, he was a World War I uh, dictator, <laughs> no, right? Dumbass. <laughs> Good one, though. Yeah, he wore the, the pointed helmet. He fucking... He fought. The, the Kaiser. He was called Didn't the Kaiser. Didn't he fight Snoopy in that no? dog fight? <laughs> dog house? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Jesus. Um, uh, Robert McNamara, former Secretary of Defense. Uh, David Packer, uh, co-founder of HP. Charles Schwab. Casper Weinberger. Can you please stop talking? Um, Walter Hatt. Hot, what, Walter Hot, I, I, this is what I get. This is what I get for putting you in your place. No, you're just Please. jealous. Oh, That's okay. all you are. You're just jealous. <laughs> That's okay. I, you know, I will never look down my nose at you ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, I'm glad you're able to cut right through it to my jealousy. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, <laughs> back to my whole point is that I have a. A board meeting there coming up. A retreat. A retreat. A retreat. Yeah, and you need to cut all that out. All that stuff about no, no names, no names. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so that retreat starts next week, and this um, elite private club is hosting us, and I'm really looking forward to um, telling everyone that you went there. Well, I'm uh, calling you from there. I'm going to call you from there. Okay. Great. You do that. So this I hope the, you get a t-shirt for that. Or this something? is one of the original mansions mm -hmm. that survived the 1906 earthquake uh, because it was made out of stone, right? All the other mansions for like the big four, the railroad, Stanford, Hopkins. Honey. I wonder, I wonder if all your big fat egos in that building at once will cause it to topple. Only if there's an earthquake. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, go ahead. So what you know, is you're the totally point ruining of this? my story by your just your being so cynical. You okay. should be like, no, I, I'm not, boy, I will. Stop. I can't wait to hear about it. I'm so excited you're going. Can you please call sorry. me from there? I'd like to hear about what the inside's like because I've never gone there and I'm never going to go. There. Would you Facetime me? So I'll I can never see get like? invited there. So I'd like to live through you vicariously Would because you're my hero. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Can you just live through me? Right, can can you, you just say, yes, I want you to go and I want you to yeah. tell me all about it. Why are you looking forward to this? Well, there's, you know, I'm a history nerd and there's a ton of history involved with this building. Well, with this house, actually. Am I going to be able to put this on there? I can talk about the, where it is, but not your, not the name right, of the club. Right. Like we're just talking about the club. The, the club, club itself. itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, great. The history of this building. So I can say the building. No, you can't say this club. No, you got to leave that name out. You got to leave it out. Oh, all right. An elite private club in the city of San Francisco. Okay. In San Francisco. Yes. Great. Okay. <laughs> so you're a history nerd. You, what about this you, fantastic you have to, building you have that to I can't leap name? leap out the name of was one of the fortunate ones who struck silver up in Virginia City during- Why would I have to leave his name out? That's a historical well, figure. Uh, well, they're going to know They're going to know the club then because- You know what? I bet they don't. You know Why? Because nobody oh, cares, and do. because the people I that listen to this so don't go to close to wrong. clubs. God, you're totally rude. God, I don't even want to tell you my story now. Oh, please, please. I, I apologize. I sincerely apologize. No, I do want to hear your story. story. You mock me. You make fun of me. It's like it's like your act. I, if I promise right now, I will turn. I'll it's turn like my own act. Mind. Okay, I'm not going to interrupt anymore. Anyway, the mansion actually belonged to who. Struck it rich in the Comstock load up in Virginia City. He builds this mansion on the top of Knob Hill. And it survived the, not the earthquake, it survived the fire because it was made of stone. All the other ones were made of wood, of course. And the Fairmont mm -hmm. also survived because it was made of stone. So I thought that was really interesting. And in the 1940s, they discovered this tunnel underneath the house that at one point went to another mansion across the street, that mansion is no longer there. And um, the guy's name, not the same one you're going to think of, but his name was Alexander Hamilton, not the same Alexander Hamilton. But these two guys had this tunnel between um, going underneath California Street in San Francisco, and they've never been able to figure out why they built this tunnel. Well, I think maybe, you know, there was something going on between the two, you know, you know. You never know. That was gay riffic. Yeah, yeah. Hamilton and, and you know, maybe they were secret Bruno lovers before the two guys. That was acceptable. So I just thought it was really interesting. God, there's just so much history there. And the members, and it's a fantastic club. And I know you don't want any part of it, but I kind of like that kind of stuff, the history part. I like the tradition. I mean, it's a very history i find history interesting yeah but you get really cynical about the stuff like that and i and i and i get it i understand because it is this elite private club i get that but i really enjoy seeing and going into buildings like that and experiencing them because to me that's all part of history mm -hmm. and it's very is it's very much as part of not just san francisco history but virginia city and you know the silver rush and the gold rush and uh, can i ask about the amenities at this club is it a hotel now or, or we will be staying the night there or hotel stay yes. somewhere else. Yeah. It has rooms. I wouldn't consider it a hotel. There are rooms. And you will be staying there. Stay. Yes. I will be staying there. Yes. And how many of you are going? How many are in this? Uh, probably a total of 13 of us, maybe 12 or 13 of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of this? Uh, besides strategic planning, games? Strate strategic planning for the next uh, five years for our club. Five years. Yeah. For our club. So we're, we're meeting with strategic planners and we have some things that we'd like to, you know, get done with, with our club. And so we're, we're, we're putting all that together. Very interesting. Is this your first official function as a board member of this fancy club? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. And how are you going to dress for it? Coat and tie, baby, all the time. Coat and tie at all times. During the meetings, we can have our tie off, but after five o'clock, all men have to have a tie on. After really? Yes. That's a requirement. Yes. And will you be dining at this place or will you go somewhere else just to change the scenery? Or? We will be dining. The, we'll have lunch and dinner that day at this club. And then the following uh, day, we'll have lunch at the club. And then we go to a different club, a yacht club uh, on Friday night for, for dinner, which is a, a yacht club about three miles away. Optional. Okay. Tie is optional. And you won't have to have a tie on during the day. For the meeting. No, as long as we stay in the room, I think certain parts of the club um, a tie is required. But as long as we're in our meeting rooms and we're not mm -hmm. going in mm -hmm. other parts of the club, no tie is required. 
Do you think you will smoke a cigar at any point during this thing? Yes, absolutely. There will be at least one, maybe two cigars smoked. Yes. Okay. Very fancy. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. And again, you're going to have to cut a lot of this out, but. Well, I, I need to know what I don't. I'll, I'm just going to cut the name of the club you belong to, yes. which we I don't think I've said it anyway. Right, right. And the name of this place. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Most people are going to know it anyway because this place is so famous and so well known. Yeah. It's one of the most exclusive clubs on the West Coast that I couldn't find on any list. <laughs> you just love that shit, don't you? You couldn't find it. It's so exclusive. Yeah, so exclusive. Nobody knows about it. Do you know what tomorrow is? Uh, well, today's Flag Day. I know what today is. It's Flag Day. Okay. Um, which I have my flag proudly being displayed on my fourteen hundred dollar flagpole. Um, no, tomorrow is June fifteenth. Uh, Paul McCartney's birthday. Is it? I know his birthday's in June. Tomorrow is the end of the masks in California. Oh. No way. We're oh, California isn't it up? Oh, God. Isn't it the, officially there's no God the bless mask, Newsom. Uh, mandate ends tomorrow, correct? God bless Newsom. I think. He's oh, he's been such a stellar stellar leader during this pandemic. I love him and the first partner. They're the best. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what is I mean, I kind of know what that means. I mean, basically People stuff wear a mask on public transportation. They're still encouraging social distancing. They're still encouraging to wear a mask. But if you've been inserted with the Chinese chip in your arm, you don't have to wear a mask as long as you've been inoculated. Is that correct? I, I guess. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not biting on that one. <laughs> what? What? Hey, did you hear about? Did you hear about this soccer match? You don't like soccer, do you? Uh, I like. The United States played against Mexico. Oh, this is horrible. I'm, I'm going to butcher the whole thing. It's horrible. But the United States played... Me it was horrible. Are you talking about the taunting that the Mexicans did to the goalie from for America? Y yes. Yes. That's just part of it. But, I mean, the United States won. I heard this game was just absolutely like a classic, all-time great game. And the United States men's soccer team has not had a lot to cheer about over the last five or 10 years. Agreed. And they won this game. I just heard it had everything you could possibly ask for over time and, and come from behind and uh, penalty kicks and, and not penalty kicks, but sudden death. And, and then they won the game. But then, yes, there were, I guess, Mexican fans that were chanting a homophobic slur and they stopped the game once and then they stopped the game a second time to where the players actually left the field. Mm -hmm. Correct. And the guy I heard being interviewed about it, who used to play for the national team in Mexico, said it was a waste. He said it interrupted play, but until they actually like take a point away from the offending team, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until they take away points, it's not going to do any good. Wow. Can you imagine for like World Cup soccer? Could you imagine? Any, so any, any type of soccer. I mean, people outside the United States go crazy for their soccer oh I, i've seen it i mean well we had the world cup here in 91 maybe 93 something like that early 90s okay the world yeah. cup and i actually attended the um match in stanford seriously california between brazil and cameroon actually who ended up winning that world cup i don't know but i know brazil beat cameroon um because mm -hmm. they've obviously you know but it was it was really cool but there was a hundred this is the old stanford stadium which is now gone you know they had one hundred five thousand crazy fans there in america right mm -hmm. but i get that um yeah it's it's a whole different it's it's a life well what do you think about chanting of racial slurs yeah. stopping the game and do you think they should take a point away could you imagine or something like that if two teams are playing doesn't matter who right and it's a one one tie or something and they take a, a point away well that would change behavior oh my god right yeah i'd also like to bring up one other point which is i brought up this historic which will be a historic game and all all that happened it was played in denver and you brought it around to what Historic. what are you talking about i was trying to talk about what? this soccer game and the implications of the game 
You said, oh, I brought it around that I went to the World, went to Cup. World Cup. You went to the United States World Cup in 1993 and that you attended a game at Stanford University. Yes. I am the chosen one. Well, you know what? You know I'm always going to bring it around to me. Come on. Was that a surprise? No, I just. Are you shocked? I'm not, I'm not shocked. I just hold it up to you like a mirror saying, you really, is that what you want to be? The guy that makes it all about him? Who does this remind you of? Sometimes. It sort of reminds me of somebody I can't, can't think of. <laughs> Some, sometimes. <laughs> My uncle was a professor. For- well, what, you have to understand, I mean, t- uh, talking to you is like talking to a hermit or a monk that's never done anything. I mean, you can't say, I've gone to a World Cup, so I have to always bring it around to me because – you have nothing to offer when it comes to that. And I'm not being offensive. I'm just saying that's just the fact of life. I'm not as well traveled as you. That is for certain. Yes. I mean, you're, you're holed up in your house. You you don't go anywhere. You don't do anything. So I need to, I need to bring a little bit of excitement to this podcast and it ain't coming from your life. It's coming from mine. I'm just letting you know, don't be offended. I'm not. I'm not glad. Thank you for just laying it out. And it's a lot of work. I would rather not have to okay, do that. I now you're you going too far. I mean, I'm playing along with your bullshit, <laughs> but now that's like a lot of work. If anybody does a lot of work on this, it's me. All right. And you do a very, very fine job, by the Thanks. way. I'm serious. Thanks. You I do. I appreciate that. You, you know, I, hey, you know, I, I, I will totally... wrap up with this. We are within okay. five. We are inside five episodes from hitting 100 episodes. No, really? Yeah. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, right. let's. We're in the home stretch because the next time I want to talk about my trip down to um, Southern California, where I stay at the Four Seasons. Great. I want it to be at all about me, as opposed to. <laughs> wow. Long, long winded. By the way, the tequila from way back at the beginning of the episode, it isn't called George Clooney tequila. It's Casamigos tequila, as I said in the intro. George Clooney didn't sell his name or anything. That's just me being an idiot. That's it. Thank you for listening to this 96th episode of The Modern Moron. You know, for old people. See you next time. Inside is one of the following names, all of whom have been nominated for the best performance by an actor. Peter O'Toole in Goodbye, Mr. Chips, Dustin Hoffman in Midnight Cowboy, John Voight in Midnight Cowboy, Richard Burton in Anne of the Thousand Days, and John Wayne in True Grit. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> the winner is John Wayne in Two Girls. I'd have put that patch on 35 years earlier. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I'm no stranger to this podium. I've come up here and picked up these beautiful golden men before, but always for friends. One night I picked up two, one for Admiral John Ford, one for our beloved Gary Cooper. I was very clever and 
witty that night, the envy of even Bob Hope. <laughs> but tonight I don't feel very clever, or very witty. I feel very grateful, very humble. And all thanks to many, many people. I want to thank the members of the Academy. To all you people who are watching on television, thank you for taking such a warm interest in our glorious industry. Good night.